Well, we I love the points. Need to talk to the man who knows. Doctor Doctor Vinny Boombot, Tom Brady's official <laughs> doctor. To. Yeah, and and listen, Stephen Rapp, do you do you <laughs> buy anything that comes out of the New England camp before uh, I don't know a kickoff of a football football game? Because I just completely ignore it. I ignore it. No, oh, I, I I mean, how can you buy into this one? I mean, but it is it's it's knocking the crap out of the off stars, the be- the betting world. I mean. There are books talking about taking this number down now. Uh, Belichick was asked today, and his answer is, it's Friday. I mean, he's, here, he's not giving up anything. I would be absolutely shocked if Tom Brady does not play this game. On, I would be beyond shocked if Tom Brady does not play this game on Sunday. It's hard to shock Stephen Rapp as well. Good morning, Stephen. Yeah. Good morning, David. How are you? Yeah. I'm pretty good, pal. So, so the number is related to the so-called rumors of his health, or is it just those thinking that maybe Jacksonville was is a little disrespected, and maybe they keep this game a lot tighter than nine and a half? Because you know, taking nine and a half points, that's a pretty good number if you got in early. I've heard both. I've heard both, Michael. I mean, I think it's a combination of both. I know that when this line dropped from eight to seven and a half yesterday, I spoke to. Uh, a friend of mine in the business who told me that they had just got hit by some sharp action 15 minutes before, which moved that number. Uh, a lot of it has to do with sharp guys getting out, professional money getting out in front of this report, um, knowing that it was going to be a little bit bigger than it is. I mean, we've talked about that in the past, David. I mean, sharp money, professional money, where are they getting their information? Sometimes their information is just better than ours. Yep. Um, also, also eight and nine, basically a dead number. Um, Though we thought last week five was a dead number two, and look what happened in the Minnesota game. So it had five hit. But basically a dead number eight, nine. So not a huge move. But, Michael, a combination of both. It had definitely has been professional money, thinking that Jacksonville's defense can keep this one close and getting out in front of this Tom Brady news. You know what? The, the way the Jaguars played in Pittsburgh, and I'm not I'm not going to say the Steelers and the Patriots are an exact replica of each other or anything of that nature, but we're, we're talking the, the the Florida team playing in cold weather. I, I don't think this is a factor at all. It's supposed to be cold again in the Boston area for that New England game, that New England home game. Uh, and, and you know what? Whether or not the Tom Brady finger or, or thumb or whatever they're calling it is healthy or not healthy I do think it's closer than a lot of people think I'm not going to sit there and say Jacksonville outright winners like some people that have Super Bowl tickets on the Jaguars <coughs> Stephen mm-hmm. Rapp, uh, I don't but, say they're a <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> cat yeah, exactly. But I'll say this, and we were talking about it before we uh, got on uh, talking to you. If Brian Hoyer plays this game for some unknown reason, the Jaguars are going to Minnesota, Stephen. Uh, well, first, I don't believe Brian Hoyer is playing this game. But, I mean, to, you want reasons why uh, Jacksonville can win this game? Teams that beat New England and Brady batter and beat them. They, they, they rush them. They, they drive them crazy. Jacksonville does that with four rushers, so that means uh, that means they're you know they had a lot of guys for secondary. Um, their secondary is outstanding. Their defense outstanding. Their defensive line is deep. But you know what? The problem is, if I know that, I'm pretty sure Bill Belichick knows that as well. And this guy just designs things uh, to to beat teams. So yeah, I think Jacksonville can keep it close. But would I be shocked if New England ran away with it? No, I wouldn't. I would actually, guys, be looking at some props. I mean, how is Belichick going to beat this pass rush? Who knows they're coming after Brady. What's he going to do? Lots of stuff to the running back. Uh, lots of screen passes to try to beat the rush. Uh, maybe you look at guys like Burkhead over 30 and a half yards. You look at Deion Lewis over four receptions. I think that is the way I'm going to be looking at this game. And then, of course, David, as you mentioned, hoping New England gets ahead, uh, hoping that Jacksonville gets the lead at some point, and I can uh, I can in play a uh, plus New England money to hedge my Super Bowl bet. <laughs> We're in conversation with Stephen Rapp from Sports Interaction here on RawMikeRichards.com and also those uh, watching on the dedicated YouTube channel. You know, uh, this usually is the time of year where I take a look at a lot of unders. Um, you know, certainly when I, when I saw last week Pittsburgh and Jacksonville, I thought, well, this, you know, it's going to be colder weather. It's going to be a little tighter. And then Blake Bortles uh, wasn't Blake Bortles. And so I'm taking a look at Jacksonville, New England, and, and both Minnesota and Philadelphia, cold weather football games, conference championships. My gut would still say we'll take some unders. But at 39 and a half in Minnesota, Philadelphia, I mean, that's going to be pretty tight. That's, that's, a, that's a low number. I'm not saying it wouldn't go a number. But are you teased at all or intrigued at all by totals this weekend? I I would actually I know it's a low number thirty nine 
39 and a half, watch 39 and a half sports interaction now, which has actually gone up. Sharp money has been on that over. Professionals on the over in that game. Minnesota, Philadelphia, uh, public. Sorry, sharp money on the under, public on the over, as it's always going to be. This game, this is the best defense Keith, Keith, uh, Keith Keenum has come up against all year. He's played two top 10 defenses all year uh, in those games. He had a 71 passer rating. He was sacked eight times. Uh, last week, he was 3 for 11, 42 yards, went under pressure. Uh, these are two quarterbacks on both sides of the ball, two offenses that are going to play it very tight, very conservatively. There's, these teams actually mirror each other. Um, I'm interested in taking points uh, in a game like this, obviously taking the three. Actually, I actually took three and a half, hoping I could lay two and a half later in the week. Uh, but if you want, I think it's going to be low scoring. I would look at the under 39 and a half. In this game, I would look at props. Elliott and Forbath kicking props because I think a long field goal, how many field goals made, total points for kickers. Because I think this is, as you say, cold weather game, very conservative offenses, letting the defenses win it, not want to make, not want to make too many problems, too many mistakes with these two quarterbacks. I see lots of conservative play and lots and lots to be done in the kicking game. So when it comes down to field goals, a, I'd obviously like to take plus three, and b, I'll take kicker props and the under. Okay, as far as the totals is concerned, then in that New England game, uh, forty-six and a half seems like a, a like a higher number if uh, number twelve isn't fully healthy. Uh, are you are you at all tempted at looking at that pl- the, and the under? Um, I'm, I'm tempted to look at the under in the Jacksonville New England game only because Jacksonville has to know. I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume the Brady's playing. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even. Not, I'm going to assume the Brady's playing. Yeah, please. Jacksonville please. At, at, Thank you, thank you very much. And, I, and and I am a doctor, even though I play one on the radio. So I know. Um, I'm going to believe that Jacksonville knows that they cannot get into a shootout with New England. They cannot win this game in a shootout. They cannot cover the spread if they get into a shootout. So this has to be Blake Bortles just running the clock, letting Fournette do the work, slowing it down, playing defense, trying to keep New England down to, you know, 17, 20 points, you know, 24 maybe. Uh, 24 will go over if Jacksonville covers. Uh, I think I, I actually both these games would lean to the under here. I think it's going to be Jacksonville knows they can't get into a shootout. Yep. Stephen, do you think Minnesota is going to host a Super Bowl in their own town? I'm uh, I'm on Philadelphia. I, well, I'm on Philadelphia. Okay. I, took the plus, like I said, took the plus three and a half. Um, I think they're being disrespected. I think this gives Case Keenum way too much value over Nick Foles. Philadelphia was at home last week and they were at home this week because they were the number one seed. Um, okay, so Foles had a bad game against, against Oakland in windy, blustery conditions, um, and then he really was a nothing game the next week that they lost. He only played half the game. I mean, give this guy a little more credit. Uh, and, and if you look at Case Keenum last week, he was throwing ducks. He was lucky not to be intercepted. He took two bad sacks. This just overvalues Keenum over Foles. Uh, Minnesota and uh, Philadelphia is home for a reason. I, I think they, I, I think they win this game. I take the plus three. Now, uh, n- not that we're going to d- definitely say something today, but you and I had talked about maybe some, you know, because you get a t- uh, the two week layoff. Maybe we're going to come up with some crazy <laughs> uh, prop bets, some 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 nutty well, prop bets. That we, we they have to be vetted, Mike, because it can't be like Brady TDs versus how many chicken wings do you eat on Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday. That that. That's not a prop that can be properly vetted because that could be manipulated a little bit. But I was talking to Phil Gray at Sports Direction, and if you want to come up with some good, decent props, we'll call them Mike Specials, and you can promote them all week for all your listeners, and they can actually bet into them. You come up with a couple different ideas for uh, funny, funny, good props that make some sense, and they not have to make complete sense because there's a number for everything, as Phil told me yesterday. Uh, up with some props that make some sense. He will put numbers on them, and uh, you and your listeners and watchers can just fire away at him for the next two weeks. Oh, I like it. That's a good idea. That is a very That's good idea. That's a really idea. good yeah, idea. That's a yeah. very good idea. Uh, Stephen, thanks you so guys much. Come yeah. up with, you guys come up with something. Come up with something good and, and yeah. a couple of good and funny ones, and I'll put them up. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe uh, your listeners can email you, tweet you, and come up with some ideas as well. Exactly. So if you're listening to Stephen right now, remember uh, if we're going to come up with some of these crazy prop bets, but crazy within reason, uh, interesting prop bets, if you're watching right now, either on the website or the dedicated YouTube channel or on Twitter, send me a couple. I might use them. And if I do, yeah. you'll get... verifiable. Yeah, identifiable I mean, prop. I, yes, that we can verify. Yeah. That kind of thing. 
Yeah, we we can't yeah yeah we can't verify how many kegs of beer somebody drinks there or how you know, they have to be something that's absolutely verifiable that you can put up two things together where you can actually get the numbers and then we can come up with a number and you guys can have fun with them so verifiable props that they can be as crazy as you want beautiful hey steven thanks so much for today always appreciate the time thanks buddy my pleasure we'll see you on sunday david what Did you just become best friends yep <laughs>